Hello friend, in today's lectures we are going to discuss about the numericals on bending stress in cantilever beam as well as simply supported beam when subjected to point load and uniform distributed load. Let's see the numerical. In this numerical, a simply supported beam having the cross section 30 mm by 30 mm and length 500 mm and point load 4.32 kN is acting centrally and at the another way in second case cantilever beam 1 meter span uh, is made of the material 30 mm by 60 mm and length of the span of that cantilever beam is given 1 meter in that case in first simply supported beam we have to calculate the bending stress and same bending stress we have to use in the second case and load acting on the cantilever beam we have to find out let's see the case number one in that case rect this uh, square section is given so moment of inertia of this section is 112 bd cube in that case b is also 30 and d also 30 it is a square cross sections so 30 into 30 cube so moment of inertia about the centroidal axis that becomes 67.5 into 10 raised to 3 mm raised to 4. Now in y distance it is the distance between this neutral axis to the outer fiber that is y is equal to 15 mm. Sigma b we have to calculate it is unknown quantity. So, moment simply supported beam is given and point load is acting. So, it becomes W L by 4. W is given 4.32 into 10 raised to 3 convert into Newton. Length is given 500 and divided by 4. So, it becomes 0.54 into 10 raised to 6 Newton mm. So according to flexor formula m upon i is equal to sigma upon y. The value of m is known, i is also known, y is also known, unknown quantity is only sigma. So put all that value here 0 0.54 into 10 raised to 6 moment of inertia 67.5 into 10 raised to 3 sigma is unknown y is equal to 15 mm do this calculation the value of sigma is equal to 120 newton per mm square. Now same material is used in the second case but having here cross sectional area is different that is 30 mm by 60 mm so here again we have to calculate its moment of inertia in the second case that is i is equal to in that case again formula is same it is a rectangular section 1 by 12 bd cube 1 by 12 b is given here 30 and d is 60 cube so do these calculations you will get a 540 into 10 raised to 3 mm raised to 4. Now second y means that is the distance from neutral axis to outer fiber. So this becomes 30 mm. Sigma we have to use the same sigma which is we already calculated in the first case that is 120 Newton per mm square. So in that case again same formula we have to use m upon i is equal to sigma upon y. So m same m it is unknown i is equal to 540 into 10 raised to 3 sigma we have already calculated that is 120 and y is equal to 30. So m is equal to you will get here 2 point 16 into 10 raised to 6 
न्यूटन एम एम नाउ फॉर द कैंटिल यूर बीम बेंडिंग मोमेंट इज पी इंटू एल इट मीन्स यू मे से डब्ल्यू इंटू एल और हियर वी हैव रिटर्न पी पी इंटू एल मोमेंट इज गिवन टू पॉइंट सिक्सटीन इंटू टेन रेस टू सिक्स पी वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट एंड लेंथ इज गिवन वन मीटर आई एम कन्वर्टिंग इन टू एम एम दैट इज वन थाउजेंड सो पी इज इक्वल टू इन दैट केस टू वन सिक्स जीरो न्यूटन दैट इज द लोड एक्टिंग एट द फ्री एंड ऑफ कैंटिल यूर बीम लेट सी दिस सेकेंड न्यूमेरिकल इन विच अ सिंपली सपोर्टेड बीम इज गिवन of having the span 4 meter and bending stress in compression and tension is given 100 mega pascal and 165 mega pascal and cross section is given unsymmetrical i sections so for the unsymmetrical i sections first we will plot its stress distribution diagram it's a simply supported beam so compressive stress will be above the neutral axis this say we say neutral axis and it is sigma c is equal to 100 mega pascal is already given and tensile stress is acting below the neutral axis which is given 165 mega pascal so distribution diagram here and it's unsymmetrical sections first we have to calculate its y bar and to calculate the y bar our equation is y bar is equal to a1 plus y1 A one into y one plus a two into y two plus a three into y three divided by summation of a one plus a two plus a three. So according to that, we say that this section number one, this second section two, and this third section three. So a one is equal to area of that first rectangle, which is one twenty into twenty. So that becomes twenty four hundred mm square. Second section that is A two. For that section A two, two sixty into twelve. So ten here. This dimension is ten. So that becomes twenty six hundred mm square. And A three is equal to one fifty into twenty, which is three thousand mm square. Similarly, we can calculate y1. Y1 is the distance of centroidal axis 11 from its base. So that dimension is y1. So y1 means half of this dimension centroidal axis that becomes a 10 plus 260 plus 20. So this becomes 290 mm. Y2 is equal to distance of this. Centroidal axis 2 2 from the base. So half of that 260 it becomes 130 plus 20. So it equal to 150 mm. And y3 is equal to half of this third centroidal that is 20 by 2 it becomes 10 mm. Now according to our equations y bar is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus A three y three divided by summation of a one plus a two plus a three. So put all these value here. Twenty four hundred into y one is two ninety. A two twenty six into one fifty plus three thousand into ten. Divided by summation of all these areas, a1 plus a2 plus a3. So y bar is equal to you will get 139.5 mm from the bottom side. From bottom side, it means this dimension is y bar. Is equal to one thirty nine point five. So in that case, we may say that is our y t dimensions. So y t is equal to one thirty nine point five. So y c become here. 
160.5 mm write the mm, mm so in that way we will calculate y bar and now we have to calculate its moment of inertia that is ixx so ixx is equal to ixx1 plus ixx2 plus ixx3 because there are three sections three one two and three so ixx is equal to that is basic equations we have seen ixx1 is equal to if i consider that figure number one so i have to write here igg1 plus a1 h1 square for second igg2 plus a2 h2 square plus ixx3 igg3 plus a3 h3 square now in that case igg is the standard that is 112 bd cube and every time we have to calculate h1 a h2 and h3 so we will write directly h1 h1 means it is the distance between the centroidal axis of 1 and neutral axis that dimension is h1 h2 means distance between this centroidal axis 2 2 and neutral axis that dimension is h2 and h3 is distance between neutral axis centroidal axis 3 3 and this neutral axis that becomes s3 now ixx is equal to just i am writing directly igg1 igg1 this for this first rectangle 112 bd cube here b is 120 d is 20 so 112 b means 120 and d means 20 cube that becomes 112 bd cube plus a1 is equal to 2400 that is the a1 and h1 h1 means these dimensions we have to calculate h1 y1 minus y bar so y1 is equal to 290 minus y bar means 139.5 bracket square that becomes h1 plus for the second figure for second figure 112 bd cube here b is 10 and d is 260 so 112 into 10 into 260 cube that becomes a moment of inertia for second rectangle a2 s2 square a2 means 2600 and s2 means distance between this two axis that is y2 minus y bar so y2 is equal to 150 and y bar is equal to 139.5 bracket square plus for the third rectangle 112 b is here 150 into d is 20 cube plus a3 is equal to 3000 and s3 means distance between neutral axis and this centroidal axis that is y bar minus y3 so y bar is 139.5 minus 10 bracket square so here ixx is equal to 119.78 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 that becomes a moment of inertia of that unsymmetrical I section now our basic equation of lecture formula that is m upon i is equal to sigma upon y in that case here compressive stress and tensile stress is given when we consider the compressive stress instead of that sigma sigi here then we have to consider here yc after that when we consider that sigma t then we have to consider yt 
and in both cases we have to calculate the moment of resistance and we will select the least moment of resistance for the calculations so in that case first we will say compression m upon i i remains same 119.78 into 10 raise to 6 is equal to sigma c sigma c means here i am considering 100 divided by yc is equal to 160.5 just here i am noting the notations only i have put this value here 100 newton per mm square for that sigma c so he in that case we have to calculate the moment and that becomes 74.62 into 10 raise to 6 newton mm in second case instead of here sigma c we have to write here sigma t so equation becomes m upon i is equal to sigma t upon y t to understand it i just i am writing it repeatedly m is here again unknown i remains constant into 10 raise to 6 is equal to sigma t is given 165 divided by y means that is a y t 139.5 so again you have to calculate the value of m and it becomes 141.67 into 10 raise to 6 newton mm so in both the cases we are getting here two values of m and but we have to select the least value select list value that is m is equal to 74.62 into 10 raise to 6 newton mm now to calculate the safe load m is equal to here it is a simply supported beam and it is acting UDL throughout the span so bending moment is equal to W L square by 8 so in that case maximum bending moment we have, we have select 74.62 into 10 raise to 6 W is unknown span is given 4 meter divided by 8 so now you have to calculate the value of W and W is equal to in that case